through the bright color palette and to the sheer size of different materials. This experimental clicking game and building game seems to captivate not just myself, but others in the calming yet aesthetically pleasing visuals. If you click this video, you might be really curious about what Outpath First Journey actually is. Outpath First Journey is just the beta version of the main game Outpath, which is an experimental clicking based building game which you can craft, gather and manage your resources where you can start building your base and buy more islands to exploit and expand. Each island has its own biome which allows different resources to actually spawn in and spark your curiosity to find out what they do and what different buildings and materials and items you can craft with them. For a single developer this game has gone beyond my standards and with more help this game could go into something a lot bigger. All items and resources are in a pixelated 2.5D art style, which has really captivated me and given me a sense of familiarity or nostalgia, as a lot of people who maybe have played this game have also played Terraria, Minecraft, games like that. The sound design is also really good, as again, the music has really just reminded me, given me that sense of nostalgia of Minecraft or Terraria. Well, funny enough, one of the main inspirations for this game was actually Minecraft and Forager. We can start to see elements of these games actually put into Outpath. A clicking game might be a bit scary for people who have never actually experienced clicking games themselves, but you don't need to obey these themes of just clicking. Maybe you do to mine resources, but you can really expand on the Minecraft type element of the game as well, which you can expand and create and build up your base on these islands. This game has also kind of reminded me of a survival type game. While playing the game, running around and collecting items and building my base, Building my first crafting table has really given me that sense of nostalgia that I always longed for after playing Minecraft. And I couldn't really find something like this in most other games. The fact that this game isn't talked about enough is quite shocking to me and how it was a single developer that actually created this game also really shocked me as this game has just immersed not just myself but so many different people. Every time you break a new resource on the ground, maybe a tree, maybe grass, maybe some flowers, you start to realize that you can actually build new stuff and research new things with these items. As you go on this game, on the top left, you can see that you gain some experience, which can then allow you to research some new items in a research table, as seen here. In the research table, the research table allows you to create new objects, which allow further expansion of your islands or resources. Here you could see this stone totem which allows you to expand your biome or get a new biome. Currently when I played there was only two different biomes but I'd hope to see many more in the future. Here in this game you can interact with different wildlife and different deposits of different materials. When you start finding your first coal or copper deposits the game starts to lighten up. Being part of the player base of this game has really shown me how no matter what, Outpath has really gone part beyond my expectations as I just decided to scroll through Steam one day to find a game to perhaps make content on. I stumbled upon Outpath First Journey. After Outpath, I really do want to research more new upcoming games as this game just proves how small indie games can be really, really high quality and have many hours go into them, creating such a depth environment for everyone to explore. This is also completely free for anyone to play right now. Outpath First Journey has huge potential. There are different aspects like magic in this game, which and slimes, of course, so there is a slight fantasy twist to this game. The creator could go into making dungeons or caves, some type of systems on these islands, maybe even boats, rafts, maybe some water type buildings, things like that. As when you go into the water, of course, you just respawn back at the island. In this game's trailer, it does show many different biomes that hopefully we'll be getting soon. But I think this game has huge potential into really diving into what they really want. The magic aspect is really well done in this game as you can craft two different staffs. One that fires a single projectile 
the second file is a burst of three. And you can also have build cauldrons to brew four different type of potions, which you will see here. This game allows you to dive in whatever theme you want. If you prefer to just an idle farming clicker game, you may do that as you please. But if you want more of that nostalgic and familiarity in Terraria or Minecraft, you can expand, build one singular base and have farms and really just explore these different biomes. This game really does provide good hours of content, but after a couple of hours this game starts to get a bit repetitive and after you have most items and materials the game starts to lose meaning however this is only beta and i only hope to see better things come in the actual main game as you expand your island you seem to have find more valuable resources as in iron or gold these are very important for late game resources and different objects that you can actually build this game provides many different types of fun objects you can have bounce pads which you can see here Whoa, you can have idle mining posts and even a collector to collect whatever your mining posts mine on its own however these only operate while you're on the island i think something that should be tweaked slightly in this game is when you are crafting something it is paused when you go to a different island but unpaused when you come back i think it should just be on pause all along so when you come back whatever you're crafting should be done as you play the game you start to realize that a lot of resources are actually intertwined with one another a lot of resources you gain mainly have a good purpose the trash you pick up from the ocean through these little fish nets could be turned into gold if you have a recycling bin this game's core mechanics and clicking mechanics are actually very interesting as you first spawn into the game you see that you do one damage to anything with a health bar which is resources or wildlife however you could use different foods or berries which then increase the amount of damage you do meaning you mine or collect faster you could also increase this damage by getting better quality weapons or pickaxes axes etc or using a special bench which you use the credits in the top left to actually increase the damage you do with your clicking this game's core mechanics are very good and very interesting but can get boring after a while so i'd like to see more pvp or pve type aspects in the game Especially if you could invite a few friends, it would be really, really funny. Especially my friends are quite dumb, but you know, we move past. As you play this game, you realize you can do a few fun activities. You could indulge in fishing, which I was horrible at. And it took me a little while to actually figure out how to fish properly. But you could also create a bug net, chase butterflies. There are two different butterflies, which is the water butterfly and the autumn butterfly, which each can allow you to create different magic potions or staffs. Referring back to the blue slimes, these are actually some interesting creatures which have huge potential to go into a huge different magic aspect of the game, which kind of remind me of some Minecraft mods that you can actually download. I think the game would be a lot, a lot more enjoyable with a cave system or a mining system. You can also find a few rare materials which don't really serve much purpose in the beta, but I hope in the full game they serve more of a purpose which of course you can get is sapphire, ruby and emerald. Different types of foods have different types of actual benefits to yourself. Most of the berries just give extra click damage, but some cooked meats can give you extra crit instead of click damage. Here you can see on the spinning wheel, this wheel actually spins when you're crafting something, which is a really nice fine detail. Another fine detail that I actually really like is when you throw your, when you release your fishing rod, if you move forward or backwards, you can hear the line spinning. And also on this uh, windmill thingy, you can actually see it spin when you're actually using it. It's quite, quite interesting and very fun to look at. This is some nice animations. Oh, fuck. I need to stop doing that. These are nice animations. Approaching my last hour and half an hour of the game, I start to realize the theme got really repetitive. I understand that it is a beta, so these things are bound to happen. I just hope that in the full game, the creator acknowledges this and is able to install a more pleasing and fun game loop. I feel like Outpath First Journey is a very impressive game for a single developer. I feel like with a team of developers, this game has a chance to actually become even more immersive than it already is. 
I feel like ideas could spiral and the game could become huge in terms of content. I do recommend to check this game out. Really worth just putting in a few hours to test out this game. Even though it is a beta, it could still offer a really good amount of gameplay and immersiveness. Reviewing this game and editing and really just watching over the gameplay has really just made me realise how much of a calming environment, an immersive environment it actually is to play. And I would highly recommend it to all players. Anyone watching this video, please do check it out. Thank you for watching this review and goodbye.